Hi folks, welcome back uh, for fourth level chemistry. This is polymers uh, two, um, the plastic strike back, and uh, I'd like to cover three main learning outcomes here, please, folks. Number one is how you draw uh, the formation of polymers on paper. It's all very well me showing you in the last video how you do it with molly mods, but how do you actually do this on paper? Also, how do we cope with more complex monomers than just ethene? And lastly, a couple of new words. Um, again, to be sh thrown at you. I think we'll do it on paper first. Now, let's start with uh, what I did on the last video. Uh, let's show it on pen and ink. So here are three monomer units. If you're not sure what a monomer was, go back and have a look at the last video. So we're going to show three monomers side by side. And the monomers we're just doing here are simply ethene. Um, this is the form that a question will always they always sh say show how three monomer units will join together to make the polymer unit in this case. Uh, so you don't actually need to show you in brown. I'm just reminding you what actually happens. We crack that bond in half. We crack that one. We crack that one, and we sort of hinge these bonds out with the appropriate squeaky door noise, um, and then we'll draw these carbons down here below. So this is where the reaction is going. I'm just going down the way because it takes up so much space on the pages. Okay, you don't have to go left or right for chemical reactions. They don't care. They're not biased. Now, this bond here still exists. And the cracked bond there is going to join with the cracked bond from this one. So we're going to create a new bond between these carbons. So that's our new bond. That's our new bond there. Now, if you remember what I showed you last time, I've still got my polymer here. More or less, sorry, I've half dismantled it. But if you remember, then the bonds disappearing off the edge show you that this is not the end of the molecule. So believe it or not, just for a change, we just put bonds dangling out into space there, but not attached to anything. And the hydrogens we can simply transplant back where they were originally. There is no change in any of these. And this is a little chunk of a polyethene, otherwise known as polythene in the real world, but it is polyethene. That's our polymer. Grand. So, monomers changing into a polymer by a polymerization reaction. These were the new words from the last video. Um, that's basically how we show it on paper, folks. And as I said, you show these dangling bonds at the end there. Some people like to put a bracket around there and a bracket around there, indicating again that it just continues out. You can do that if you like. There's nothing wrong with that. More complex monomers. Let me get a fresh sheet of paper. We'll also build a more complex monomer for you, and we'll show you it. I'm going to show you in paper first because it looks it looks more complex than it is. So, how are we going to polymerize butene? The way the question will show you butene is it will probably draw it like this: four carbons. Again, if you weren't instantly familiar with that, then your job is to go away and learn it. Butte, remember, means four monkeys eat peeled bananas. Have a look at the link in the last video as well, um, if you're not sure. So this is going to be our butene. We'll pop our double bond there. Now, this is the way the question will show you that we'll draw the butene out like this. And then you're left in your head thinking, what do I do with this? Do I do I try and draw butenes next to each other? You know, do I do one, two, three to there? And then another one like that. But how how do I link it? You, you tie yourself up in knots. Well, let me show you the secret to this one. Here is my butene molecule that I built for you. This is a more accurate representation of butene. And you see a couple of things instantly. It's not a straight line. Okay, it's nowhere near a straight line, but there's something even more important than that. All these bonds, except this one, can rotate quite freely. And it also means you could simply do that. So we can bend this whole chunk here down out of the way. And then it doesn't interfere with anything. So let's do that on paper. Let's take this structure here and redraw it, paying attention basically to this because the double bond is the daddy here. It's what enables you to link butene molecules to each other. Let's shift all this guff out, out the way 
And let's redraw butene like this. When I say all this guff, I mean all this. Because this is not important to the polymer. And let's shift it down here. So if we draw it, redraw it like this, suddenly life becomes an awful lot easier. In fact, that, that is very similar to how we represented the ethene in the first one. Just this H has been replaced by this chunk here. So let's draw three of these side by side. Do you know what? I'm going to pause the video. There's no point in spending your life watching me draw stuff. And as if by magic, we suddenly have three butene molecules side by side. And if we do the same as we did before, we'll break these bonds. We'll hinge them out, and then we will redraw the polymer molecule. Again, I'm going to pause it to save your life and play again. Here we go. Here's a polymer. Nearly finished. Can you spot what I've not done yet? Um, I haven't indicated that it continues. So there we go. There's a polymer continuing out. Now, this looks really complex, but it's not. Uh, for starters, before I go any further, by the way, you can probably, hopefully, tell me what the name of this polymer is. Remember, we have it in poly, and then we stick poly before the name of the monomer. Short-term memory. If you're not sure what the name of our monomer was, go back and have a look at the video. But this is polybutene. Um, and that's about it in terms of structures. I did say I was going to throw a couple of new words at you so far, and none of them have been coming your way yet, apparently. But in the last five minutes of this video... What I would like to do is throw the new terms at you and perhaps we could work the other way around. If I show you a polymer structure, we can work backwards and then work out what the monomer that you built it from would look like. Let's throw a couple of new words at you, guys. Now, um, excuse me. I'm very sorry, I was just checking there. There is only one new term that I need to throw at you in this video and I'm going to do it right now. Because if we look at this chunk of polymer here, I'm hoping that you can see that that uh, unit there repeats itself three times in this structure. Now, the new term, it's not very technical today, but the new term for that bit that repeats itself is, shockingly, the repeating unit. So in purple, you can see what is called the repeating unit. And that's just the little bit of the polymer that uh, looks as if it's been like copied and pasted, chunk, 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 all the way along the line. Now, if you're bright, you can probably figure out that that's because, duh, we made the polymer from lots of monomers. And the monomers are all identical to each other. That's why the repeating units are identical. But we can actually use this to work backwards. If I hit you with a polymer that you've never seen before, if you can work out what the repeating unit is, and then if you want to go backwards to construct a monomer, all you need to do is effectively remove the repeating unit and then recreate the double bond. And boom, there's your monomer. So this is the process of working backwards, which is what exam questions will sometimes ask you to do as well. They'll give you the polymer and they'll ask you to draw the structure of the monomer. So all I did there was I worked out what part of the polymer repeats over and over again. I isolated it and I recreated the double bond. So I'm going to pause this at my end. I'm going to create a polymer for you and then you could try doing just exactly that. And we're back with this polymer chain here. So I'm going to ask you, see if you can pause the video and do a couple of things for me. Number one, can you identify the repeating unit in this polymer and can you Three things, actually. Number two, can you draw the structure of the monomer that was joined together to make the polymer? And number three, can you name that monomer? So, if you are... Excuse me, two seconds. I need to pause my video as well. Okay, let's do the first part first, oddly enough. Let's see if we can identify the repeating unit. If it was me, personally, I would... I mean, it looks like a confusing mess at first until you start just looking for repeating patterns. So we have a CH3 sticking up here, and then an H, then a CH3, then an H, then a CH3, then an H. 
and down the bottom, the other way around, we have an H, and then CH2, CH3, H, CH2, CH3. So personally, I think I would just do that for my repeating unit. Um, if you wanted to, interestingly, you could have done it this way around. I wonder if that makes any difference to the final answer. We should probably try both, shouldn't we? Uh, let's stick with the purple one first, though. Uh, I said to repeat to identify the repeating, repeating unit. Number two, I said to draw the structure of the monomer which was used uh, to create this polymer. Now, if you remember from the last uh, slide, we just destroy that bond, take it out of the polymer and then recreate that. That is all you need to do. You don't even need to rearrange it or move it around. That is perfectly correct. So that is the structure of the monomer. And so is that one, of course. Uh, lastly, I asked you to name it. Probably the trickiest part, actually, because it looks horrendous. But if you remember that this is just an alkene, this is just one of our alkenes. One, two, three, four, five. So if we've done it correctly, the alkene with five carbons should have C5, H10. I'll just check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Brilliant. It is, in fact, C5, H10, otherwise known as pentene. And we're done. One last example of that. One last example. Now, in this one here, uh, if this wasn't my terrible handwriting, if this was an exam paper, you would clearly see that that is a Cl and that's a Cl, so that's chlorine, and that's an H and an H, so hydrogen, chlorines, hydrogens, chlorines, hydrogens. Identify the repeating unit. There's a repeating unit there. Turn it into the structure of the monomer. Well, we would keep the two carbons. We would keep the two hydrogens. So uh, there and there. We'd keep the two chlorines. We would, of course, have to remember to turn that back to a double bond. In this case, we're not going to ask you to name that because you're not quite sure what the name of that would be. If you're interested, by the way, if you're interested, it's 1,1-dichloroethene. But don't worry about that. Uh, what's more important here is what we did right back at the start. Let's have a recap. So today, in this longer polymers part 2 one, because it is longer, it's more complex. Sorry, thank you for listening, folks. I wanted to show you how we represent the polymerization reaction on paper. I also wanted you to show you how to deal with the more complex monomers, which we tend to write like this, but then you clarify by simply bending everything else down out of the way and isolating just the double bonds so you can join them to the neighbour more easily. And lastly, I threw a new word at you, a new term, which was this repeating unit concept. And you take the repeating unit, Take it out of the polymer, pop the double bond back in, and you can work backwards effectively and recreate the monomer from the polymer structure. Thanks for listening, folks. Um, this will be uh, handy when it comes to National Five time, if you come back to join us again next year. In fact, I'm probably tempted to pop this video into both uh, playlists, actually. Thanks for listening. Coffee time.